I've come to Essex to visit a garage, but it's not just any garage because behind those blue doors is a Ford fan's dream come true. Behold, Ford's Heritage Workshop. <laughs> I might get a little bit giggly because I'm rather excited. We've got currently in here, we've probably got about 80 cars. There's 106 in total in the collection. My personal favourites would have to be the original London Mexico winning rally car, Mark Van Eskel, and the Lotus Cortina. And also Mark One Granada, because I used to have a few, <laughs> and it's one of my favourites. This building is currently just purely what we call a heritage workshop. It's not a museum, it's a working collection. They have to go out, earn their keep, be driven by journalists, as you well know. Being a Ford fan and getting to mooch around here and seeing all these famous models is a bit like being a film buff and going star spotting in Hollywood. In fact, wait a minute, is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Supervan! Actually, this is Supervan 3. Yes, it may look like a Mark V Transit with a body kit, but it's actually a 7 8 replica shell on a race car chassis. And in the low bay is a supercharged 3 litre V6 Cosworth engine. Having so many fantastic Fords at your disposal could make even the most jaded motoring journalist feel like a child in a sweet shop. And that makes it tough to decide which cars to try. So I'm going to drive three Fords I wanted to own and three Fords I actually did own, starting with the first car I ever bought, which was this. The second generation Ford Fiesta XR2 was built between 1984 to 1989 and used a 1.6 litre engine with 94 brake horsepower. With a 0-60 time of around 10 seconds and a top speed of 103 miles an hour, it's not exactly quick by today's standards, but it still sounds as good as ever. I'll tell you what, that rorty exhaust noise just brings back so many memories and so much fun. I love my car so much. I used to have many an argument with my friend who had a Peugeot 205 GTI that my car was better than his. Obviously that was total nonsense, but it's quite interesting coming back into the XR2 after so many years now as a motoring journalist and having driven loads of different cars. And I think I can actually appreciate it more now than I did back then, because it really could show some modern hot hatches a thing or two as to what makes a fun small car. But while the XR2 will put a smile on your face, if it's comfort you're after, there's one old Ford which really stands out. The Granada. The Mark II was sold between 1977 and 1985, and this gear version had a 2.8 litre V6 engine with 135 brake horsepower. It also came with a 3-speed automatic gearbox, super comfy leather seats and extra insulation under the carpet that added soundproofing. How luxurious is that? This car takes me right back to my childhood. I'm actually cheating a bit with this one because I didn't own a Granada, my dad did. He actually had a slightly later Gear X model, but it was my favourite car that he ever owned. And I remember going down to the south of France in the back of it with my sister and we'd be wedged in, surrounded by loads of cheese and wine. And his car actually had air conditioning. And even though it was sweltering hot, he would never let us put it on because it used fuel. The ironic thing was though, that it actually seized up due to lack of use and he had to pay about a grand to get it fixed. The Big Granny was a very successful car for Ford of Britain, but its sales paled in comparison to the Escorts. It was the UK's best-selling car in the 80s and this Mark IV was available between 1986 and 1990. Most were manual versions, however a few automatics were sold, though surviving examples like this one are now scarce. Each Ford Heritage car comes with a piece of paper with some information on it. And the one for this 1989 Ford Escort GL Auto has a line at the bottom which reads, 
After many years of faithful service, this car was donated to the Ford Heritage Collection by its owner, Mr. Matthew Watson, a motoring journalist on Auto Express. That's right, this was my car. I actually bought it back in 2004 off eBay for around 200 quid. We used it in a feature for the magazine to show how much cars had grown in size since the 80s and early 90s to the present day. Okay, so that's three Fords I've owned, but what about the Fords I wanted to own? Unfortunately, I can't drive the RS200 nor the Ford GT over there because, unfortunately, they're both being repaired. But there is another iconic Ford that I can drive. The Sierra Sapphire RS Cosworth. Thanks to its 2.0-litre turbocharged engine, it was a serious performance car that could worry a Ferrari 348. This particular 1992 model had 217 brake horsepower and was good for 0 to 60 in 6.6 .6 seconds and had a top speed of 145 miles an hour. When I was a teenager, I wasn't that interested in the German stuff like you know, BMW M cars. This was the performance model I wanted, and you know they say you shouldn't meet your heroes, but. I'm not disappointed in this Sierra Cosi at all because it really does feel special even today. When you put your foot down, you have a bit of lag, then the turbo kicks in <laughs> and then it is proper quick. Now most people preferred the whale tail version of the Sierra Cosworth. I preferred the Sapphire, this particular model, because it was more of a wolf in sheep's clothing. And this one, this is the four-wheel drive, so you've got some extra traction. And it's actually the very last Sierra Cosworth 4x4 ever made by Ford, so I've got to be very careful with it. However, the Cosi isn't the only last off-the-line car on Ford's heritage fleet. So is this 160 brake horsepower V6 powered Capri 280 Brooklands. When it rolled out the factory in 1986, it marked the end of an era. And so, due to its importance, Ford asked me to be very gentle with the old girl. Yeah, right. I am the coolest man in the world right now. Actually, I'm probably not, but that, that's just the way the full Capri makes you feel. In fact, this is my favourite model to come out of Ford Europe. It's just such a special car. It looks proper. It drives proper. Surprisingly well, actually, for an old girl. And it just feels special inside. It's fairly plush. You sit nice and low. You get a great view over that long bonnet. It's a man's car. In fact, I think my testosterone level has risen somewhat since driving this. The only thing about it is that it raises the question, why the heck hasn't Ford built another one? I mean, come on, guys. You've kept us waiting long enough. The Capri 280 may well have been a desirable car, but it wasn't exactly cheap for a Ford. The Escort Mexico, on the other hand, really was a performance Ford for the masses. Built to celebrate the company's success in the 1970 London to Mexico rally, it had a stiffer body, sports suspension, and a tuned 1.6 litre engine that could do almost 100 miles an hour. Wow! This is the first car I ever remember actually wanting. When I was a kid, my next door neighbour's son had one of these things and he used to have it on his driveway and was always tinkering with it. And occasionally he let me sit in the driver's seat and make brum brum noises. Unfortunately, I was way too young to drive it. So this is the first time I've ever driven an Escort Mexico. And I'm quite surprised just how easy it feels to drive for an old car. It actually handles pretty well when you want to spin it round a corner. This particular car has a twin choke Weber carburetor so when you put your foot down it responds pretty sweetly and you feel like you're going really quickly until you look down at the speedo and realize that you're not. Driving all these old heritage fleet Fords was a real treat but if there was one I'd like to take home it would have to be the Capri. It will always be one of the most iconic Fords ever made. Well, I hope you enjoyed this trip down Ford memory lane with me. Maybe in another 20 years' time, another journalist will come along and do a film and be all starry-eyed just like me and go, Oh my God, look, it's a Ford Focus RS 500. When I was a kid, that was the car I wanted. You know, this place 
It's, it's brilliant really, it really is a national treasure.